Hi, I'm Hillary McElwain, a business developer from Optimus Price. We're a company that focuses on price optimization and demand prediction through artificial intelligence, machine learning, and dynamic pricing. However, because this is such a new industry, I wanted to create this webinar to help teach people about price optimization. In this presentation, we're going to go over the exact gap that is being solved and explain generally the options that are available for it. The main problem it is targeting is that setting prices for any company is difficult, but clearly it is essential to run a business. So they've been buying these services to help solve this problem for them. The right price, the right price is even more important than it has ever been before because the world is so much more interconnected. The competition has therefore increased because people have access to almost every single store making price a key factor for all consumers. Also, now with the internet, customers are typically very informed about the product that they're purchasing, so the power is now more in their hands. What I mean by this is they now have the power to be picky with the price because they have almost every product at their fingertips. With this comes the large intermediaries such as Amazon they also hold most of the power because they're where majority of the consumers go to shop. Through all the outlets I just mentioned, low cost has become the main priority for all consumers. And there is a huge emphasis on sales or upselling items. That is where price optimization comes in handy by figuring out those very crucial pricing decisions for you. There are two main benefits to using dynamic pricing. The first is economic. It is that it, you just simply make more money. Harvard and MIT found that through dynamic pricing, a company's profit increased by 9.7%. This then made the companies even more competitive, and on top of it, all the customers were very satisfied. The second is the operational benefits. This is all tied to the fact that the whole pricing product process is now automatic. This means minimum maintenance and near real-time pricing. Also, since the machine has tested many values, you can be confident in the information that you get. The last benefit you will see on this page is the future for dynamic pricing. Once pricing becomes so predictable, you'll be able to use it as a way to segment your market or just simply to give your business more information about its market. This will then be used instead of any of the controversial private information that's currently being used. So this slide is something we are very proud of in the dynamic pricing sector. These are just a few of the companies that are currently using dynamic pricing solutions. As you can see, there are companies from different sectors, big and small. And let me be honest, I usually change the slide for every talk I do, and I've never had a problem finding new logos because there are so many companies that are using dynamic pricing. Now that we know more about the necessity of dynamic pricing, I'm going to talk more about the technical strategies behind the programs. The first fundamental idea behind dynamic pricing is that it is a function of demand. The idea of demand is a lot more complex than it originally sounds because it is affected by so many factors, such as a season or a specific holiday or even a sale. That is why it must be dynamic. For example, if the demand increases, then the price can increase because there's such high demand that the price won't matter to the customer because they just want the product. You can see this with the price of flights and hotels during spring break being a lot higher than even just the week before. This is also a great example to show how automatically prices are being updated these days. Since it is so common, customers have grown accustomed to it and actually see dynamic pricing in a positive view. They typically see it as though they have gotten a deal when it's cheaper. Lastly, dynamic pricing doesn't use A-B testing, so there's no discrimination when deciding prices to the customers. So there are two types of solutions for dynamic pricing. The first is artificial intelligence based, where the machine uses previous data and mathematical formulas to automatically infer prices. The second is rule based where a person manually types in the formulas to assign prices to each SKU. This typically gets better with more expertise because you have to know when to adjust the prices and how much you should adjust them. 
Since artificial intelligence is a little bit more complex of a solution, I thought it would be best to explain it in greater detail. So artificial intelligence has two different models, elastic and competitive. To put it simply, elastic model is for a company that has already defined themselves in an industry, so price doesn't matter as much. This means the machine would be used to model the supply and demand for the company. But if your company is in a sector that's highly competitive and price is more crucial, then there is the competitive model. This one focuses on the price in order to maximize sales and outsell your competitors. Most good artificial intelligence based machines can be altered to fit both of these and a company will simply recommend whichever one fits best for you. Let me show you what the machine sees internally. This is an actual plot with real data. You can see the black dots which represent sales. These sales have been performed at different prices so you can see as you can see on the horizontal axis and every sale brings some profit of course. Note that the sales at the same price don't necessarily bring the same profit. This could be for many reasons, but one could be like a paid campaign or something. In the end, you can see the ratio of prices versus profits. And this is what the machine does. It then plots the blue line that represents the demand curve and tells you which price will bring the most profit. For this example, it was $503. However, in order to have the machine plot all the data that was just on the slide before, you must be able to accurately calculate profit. This calculation can be kind of tricky because there are so many different variables. You can see profit is the retail players plus the indirect profits, but then you also have to subtract the cost of the sale and the opportunity cost. It would be naive to just think profit was the retail price minus the cost of purchasing the product. Since it can be hard to see the hidden costs or profits, I'll give you a little a couple examples. First, for indirect profits, you should think of teleco selling, like selling terminals. They actually make more money when they group it together with a data contract. Next, when thinking of a cost of sale, generally think of cost acquisition. This can be the amount of money you spend on marketing divided by the amount of customers you get through that marketing strategy. So say it was $100 to do an Instagram campaign, but through that campaign you got 10 new customers. Then it was $10 for that um, cost acquisition. Lastly, for opportunity costs, you can think of items in boxes in a warehouse. They have a specific potential price, but then that can decrease over time due to them expiring or in the case of retail, going out of fashion. Also, housing that inventory can be very expensive, so you want to keep this low in order to increase your profit. If this is large, it is a huge sign that your company is not doing well. You might be curious what specifically dynamic pricing can do for you. Well, there's actually several different levels depending on how much you want to apply to your business. The first is the simplest. You can just use the calculated prices in order to optimize your profit. The second level is when you don't compete with prices, but you optimize your catalog and create special offers that are then enticing to your clients. This can be generated through the artificial intelligence machine. The third level is the future for dynamic pricing. That is the idea that pricing will become so predictable that you can use it as a form of segmentation, therefore creating another way to set segment for marketing your product. Let's not forget about all the benefits of artificial intelligence full automation. These are real plots for real SKUs, which have been calculated in just a few seconds. Through machine learning, the computer was able to make all these predictions. Maybe your own predictions would have been more accurate, yes, but we know that your time is very limited and the day can only have so many hours. So then you can rely on this machine that can do hundreds of thousands of calculations per hour. Although there are a lot of benefits for artificial intelligence based pricing. As with everything, there are risks. So I'm going to spend the next few slides describing those risks. But first I wanted to include this graph that compares the return profits first time for artificial intelligence based and rule based pricing. As you can see in the yellow, rule based 
can start making profit right away. This is because AI needs a record of past sales in order to give a recommended price. However, once AI, AI starts learning, the profit rapidly increases and ultimately surpasses rule-based pricing. The major risks include everything that's related to a company's financial statement, such as sales, price, cost, and churn. This is due to the fact that you have to share these things for the company to properly price your catalog. This really shows the importance of picking the right company to price your stock. The minor risks are mostly related to companies that offer comparisons to your competitors. Although this might seem good the first time you hear it, when you really think it through, it's pretty intimidating. The company is able to provide you that service because your competitors may have used that company before. Therefore, if you use it, they can sell your company's data to another one of your competitors. It is essential to keep your business model safe and steer clear of companies such as Price Buy. Since there are legal risks due to the general data protection regulation, so many companies do not try to do anything risky. However, some companies still do, and you must be aware of what you should look out for. First off, you should decide if you want a company that comes directly to your office and downloads their software, or if you would rather simply upload your data to a SaaS service. If you chose the on-premise one, you would be 100% sure that your data is secure because it never left your office. This would then be managed by either the vendor or yourself. If you chose the SaaS service, you would be able to you have to make sure that you trust the provider and the cloud that they are using to be 100% sure that your data is safe. However, this service is a lot more flexible and can be used anywhere. Also, to minimize legal risk, you should make sure the company doesn't have any price discrimination because it's illegal in many countries and you should avoid sending any personal information. Most importantly, you should have the provider sign an NDA in case there is any problem. Since choosing a company to price your catalog is like giving up control of a core part of your business, you must analyze what automation options exist and pick one that works best for your situation. Most importantly, you should make sure it is easy to stop using in case there are any problems. You do not want to become 100% reliant on it. When looking into automation options, you should be aware that there are more complex AI programs, and just because they're more complex does not mean they're better. You should be able to understand who and what is behind the machine that is making so many important decisions for you. If you don't know what's going on, as we like to call it, it's the black box because you can't see behind it, that's very risky. You should also find a program that fits into the, fits into the way your company is already being ran. Your company should not have to waste time adjusting to a program when there are so many different options available. Most importantly, when you are trying to find the right company for you, don't be afraid to ask around and learn about dynamic pricing. It is a relatively new field and there's a lot of new information that can often be intimidating at first. If there's anything to take away from this whole video, it is that automation can never replace an expert. A person knows how the customer is feeling emotionally and psychologically, so he or she can predict prices better than any machine ever will be able to. However, since markets are not perfect and are very dynamic, prices must be adjusted very quickly. If you notice that your company can no longer afford the time or money that it takes, then maybe look into automation. If that is the case, I hope this video was helpful for you to start your research with. I did this video simply to help inform people of such a new industry, but if you realize that maybe your company needs an AI-based pricing program, and look more into Optimus Price. I attached the links so you can learn more about it. Uh, thank you for your time, and I hope you found it educational. Also, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions.